some of those points with Gavin Shuka now. He's the MP for passengers in Luton South. Over the weekend, he was one of 20 MPs who wrote to Chris Grayling calling on him to act. Um, Mr Shuka, Chris Grayling made that statement in the Commons. How much better do you feel about the situation now he's done that? Well, not better at all. I mean, this is a transport secretary who said sorry many times in the Commons today, but took no responsibility either over what's happened here or what is going to be done to clear it up. And I'm afraid making this the problem of the operator, uh, making it the problem of network rail, ignores the one part of the system which we expect to step in when things go wrong. That's the Department for Transport. That's Chris Grayling. Well, you did call Chris Grayling complacent today. Um, in terms of sorting this whole debacle out quickly, realistically speaking, what do you think he can do? Well, I think there are a couple of things right now. There are sadly missed opportunities at this point. First of all, Chris Grayling needs to appoint someone to take direct ownership over this problem answerable to him. It's not good enough to leave it to the people that screwed up these timetables in the first place to put them back in place. Secondly, he needs to be clear about the future of this franchise. Now, we've got major changes coming up again in December of this year. It's not clear at this point the current timetable will even be in place by that point. But I don't think it's acceptable for GTR to run this franchise at the time of the next major timetable change in December. He needs to plan for that as well. We heard Andrew Sinclair there mention renationalisation because, yes, at the moment you have state-owned track, you have privately run trains. Um, your party leader obviously favouring renationalisation. What's your view on it? Well, I sat around three months ago with the people that were in charge of implementing this timetable change when they massively downgraded the ambition of it and cancelled peak services from East Midlands. I spoke to everyone around that table, Network Rail, the operators, the department, and I asked who had taken that decision. After 10 minutes, not one of them could answer me. So on accountability grounds alone, this franchise should be in public ownership and it should be working out to a new future of 24 trains per hour under direct accountability and oversight of Parliament. Very briefly, in the last 30 seconds or so, um, once we sorted out the immediate problems of what's going on here, what do you think needs to happen with compensation? Well, I, I think there's a double-edged sword here. Absolutely, it's right uh, to provide compensation for those people who can prove that there have been long delays, uh, and there's no shortage of those right now, including sick season ticket holders. But this is a different kind of line. People tend to kind of turn up and expect to go, and many people won't meet that threshold. So that's been a more creative solution here. Ultimately, Mr. we've got to fix the original problem. Mr. Shuka, thank you so much for joining us on Look East tonight. Thank you.